Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and this is a look at the Game to F8 Pro Snowgon. So this is a mobile cooling grip, as you can see down here, from GameSir, who are actually better known for making game controllers rather than coolers. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this fares. So on the back of the box here, there's a bit of information about the grip itself, but inside you basically get your mobile cooling grip, and you get a bit of information, a USB lead, USB type C to type A, and the usual game sir, stickers, etc. Okay, so let's take a look at the grip itself. So there's quite a good um, feel to it. It's quite nicely contoured, nice design here. So you do feel like your hands really do wrap around the controller. So that feels really nice. Quite like the sort of raised bits at the front here as well, because they allow you to rest your thumbs on there too. So that's quite good. Now you can see this little uh, flappy thing here. This is the joystick that attaches to the controller. So we have a look here. Basically, when you push around on this joystick here, the little pad under here will move around as well, as you can see. And this sort of conductive pad here touches your screen and therefore moves as if it's your thumb on the screen. So that's quite a nice little addition to this cooler here. Now you can see here as well, you can move this up and down, so it can slide up and down. So depending on where your sort of left thumbstick is on the screen, you can really adjust this to, you know, the exact position that you need. This can also be taken off if you don't want to use it. You simply give it a bit of a pull and it clips out like that. And then you can just use the sort of grip by itself if you wish. I'm going to keep it on for the time being and we can just pop it back in nice and simple and it goes up and down like that. So here is the cooling pad. So this is a proper cooler. It's not just a fan and that does get nice and cold, which we will be testing shortly. As you can see, there's a sort of grip style, sort of textured pattern here. Now this is just plastic, as you can probably hear. And I'd have probably preferred maybe a couple of hexagons of rubber to rest, you know, when your bottom of the phone is resting on here, it'd be nice to have something protecting it. Now you do have the rubber bits in the side here, which are very nice. They do feel good and solid. They're not going to be coming out anytime soon. But yeah, it would have been nice to just have a couple of hexagons of rubber padding to protect your camera and the back of the phone which we'll be having a look at shortly. So on the back of the grip here, we can see the main cooling fan itself. It's quite quite large, good uh, few centimeters in diameter there. And we also do have a little kickstand here. So you can pop that out and then you can pop your grip down with your phone in. If you're just running off to go and, I don't know, answer the front door or something, you might want to pop it down on the table. So the other things on the back here, are the on off switch. So this turns the fan cooler unit on and off, which we'll have a look at shortly. Just so you know, you can actually remove this if you pull out these metal clips from the side, you can remove that. But when it's tucked away like that, it doesn't really get in the way anyway. So the other nice thing about this grip here is that you do have access to the sides of your phone here, as you can see, both sides. So no matter what side your charging port is on, you can actually still charge your phone whilst using this grip. All right, so this grip can support phones up to 173 millimeters in width. So let's just have a look with this ROG Phone 5 here. Now this is just under 173 millimeters and it fits in absolutely fine. Now, if I stretch open a bit more, I'd say there's a good, there's a good few millimeters left. Maybe I'd say you could fit a phone of 175 in here, just about squeeze it in. So the ROG Phone 5 though does fit in quite nicely as you can see and we would pop down the little left thumbstick here and away we go, we're good to go. What we're going to do first before we actually start playing is just see how cold this pad can get. It's all very well saying that your phone's going to be you know, like an icicle but if it doesn't actually work then there's going to be no point in actually purchasing this. So I'm going to plug it in now and we'll see how it goes. Let's just check the temperature before we plug it in. So we're getting about 28 degrees currently on the surface of the pad. So let's plug it in and see how it looks. USB in and we turn on the switch here and we get a nice look at the LEDs here. So the fan does have built in LEDs. Now you can't control them at all, but you know, they are what they are. And yeah, it's a nice little sort of cool thing to have. 
on a grip as well. So let's just start measuring this and see how cool it gets. So I'm going to pop it down here. So we've already gone down from, what was it, 27 degrees down to 15. So that's really quick actually. It's gone down 12 degrees already. Going down to 14 degrees here. Okay, so it's been a few minutes now and we're down to 7.4, 7.3 degrees C here. So that's nice and cool. Let's plug in or slide in our ROG Phone 5 here and put it through its paces. Okay, so we're on a very high and max frame rate here. Just to try and get the phone to heat up as much as possible. The phone's currently running at 28 degrees C. So I'm now gonna pop down the left stick here. And as you can see, that places nicely onto the screen here. So you've probably seen actually in some videos of mine that when I'm playing, I tend my thumb seems to end up halfway at the screen because you know I, you don't really get any sort of tactile feedback as to where your thumb is sometimes, or at least I don't. So I really like having this here because that really allows me to just stick to the correct location of where the movement sort of uh, stick is and I don't have to worry about anything other than aiming. Now I did have to move the analog stick to this position on the screen to get it to line up properly, but as long as your game supports that, you should have no problems whatsoever. So like I say, I really like this because it allows me to just worry about aiming rather than moving. So I can just quickly make movements now with my thumb and not have to worry about, uh, like I say, getting my thumb out of place at all. Especially when these bots keep moving left and right like this. Okay, so we can see after a bit of playing here, we've gone up to 30 degrees Celsius. Now the fan on the back doesn't feel too warm. You can probably hear it actually. It's not too loud. It is noticeable though, so. Just bear that in mind if you want to play uh, in a sort of quiet area, it will be, uh, you will be able to hear it. Now, what I've done for this game is actually set always sprint to be on because obviously you've only got a certain amount of travel here with the left sort of joystick. So you, where you'd normally have the sprint button up here somewhere, I've actually just removed that completely and just enabled always sprint in the game settings. So that way I can always run around which I do anyway, pretty much, certainly in COD, and just carry on playing without any issues. Okay, so I've just put in my Red Magic 6R here, and I just want to show you one of the potential issues that you could have with this left stick. So, obviously the directional pad is down here on Genshin Impact, and you can't move it. At least I haven't found a way to be able to move it. So, if your game is like that, and you want to use this pad, you'll find, as you can see here, that we can't actually go anywhere other than sort of up and left. So it's a bit of a shame really, but we can't use this for Genshin Impact. So what you can do in that situation, obviously, is just take this off. And just play it without it, which is what I'm going to do at the moment. So the other thing to think about is obviously your speaker location. So here on the Red Magic 6R, for example, you can see that the speaker is on the left hand side of the phone and is now getting slightly blocked from the grip here. Now I could move the phone up a bit to make it so that the speaker is more visible, but then as you can see, you're gonna have less of the calling pad on your phone. So I'm gonna keep it down as low as I can and we'll just see how hot the game gets. Now in my testing, I had it set to the highest and 60 FPS. So you can see everything's on the highest and 60. And the phone got up to about 51, 52 degrees. And that was without the cooler. And it did start complaining, saying that it was overheating and it just really wasn't very happy at all. So I'm gonna play this for a few minutes and we'll just see what sort of temperature we get up to here. Now I could make it go even hotter by plugging in the phone and getting it to charge up. So I might do that just to speed it up, but I will come back as when I've got the feeling that it's got to the hottest it possibly can and we'll just see how well the caller actually performs.
Okay, so I've got the 6R here to a suitably hot state. It's currently running at 52 degrees and it is extremely hot to touch. So I'm gonna unplug this now. We've even got this message that won't go away because of the problem that it's uh, overheating. So I'm gonna unplug the charger here. We don't need this still, so let's get rid of that. And we're currently at 52 degrees, so I'm just gonna leave it for a while and we'll see how much it cools down to. Right, so I've left the phone for quite a while now and we've gone down to 45 degrees and it's a lot easier to touch now. I could quite comfortably carry on playing without any issues at all. So we went from what, 52 down to 45. So that's a good seven degrees cooler than it was before. Now don't forget we are running this completely maxed out. Uh, as you can see, highest settings, click on the right one, highest overclock settings, 60 FPS. So I imagine normally people would probably be running either medium or maybe even lowest. So I'm gonna set that down to medium and 60. I will just see what sort of temperature we get to once I've restarted the game. Okay, so we're back at medium and 60, and we can see the phone's staying at around 30 degrees now, so that's much, much better than I would have expected. Certainly for the fact that it's running it, to, so it's still sort of classed as overclocked on the graphical settings because we've got it set to 60 FPS. So yeah, 30 degrees, absolutely perfect sort of temperature really. This is a Snapdragon 888 processor in, in this phone and in the ROG Phone 5 actually, so they do get quite warm as it is anyway. But yeah, I've been quite impressed with this actually. It isn't bad at all. Looks nice, feels nice. And I think apart from the fact there's no padding underneath your phone, so where the camera is here, for example, there's nothing protecting it from touching that plastic, although it isn't actually touching it. In theory, it could do. I think that's the only thing missing really from the game, sir, just a couple of pads just to you know soften the blow if you did accidentally uh, scrape your phone against this. This isn't sharp, but it is obviously plastic, so plastic on plastic or plastic on glass isn't necessarily a good thing. So other than that though, for $39.99, it's pretty good. I can't really complain at that price. So that's about 28 pounds in total or around 33 euros. I'll put a link down below if you do want to pick one of these up. It is nice, it does feel good in the hand. Like I said, I really do like this grip. I do like this little kickstand here. You do of course get the added benefit of having LEDs as well, just look cool, as you can see. They do randomly change color, which is a nice effect. And the sound of the fan isn't too loud either. So overall, yeah, a pretty good grip I'd say. And I do like the added benefit of the detachable little left stick here, which for me, I would prefer to use that on most games. Sadly, like I said, Genshin, you can't actually adjust the position of the left stick, but on most games you can, like PUBG and COD Mobile, so you should be absolutely fine with that. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click on the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. If you've got any questions at all regarding the game set F8, then do let me know down below and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you want to become a member of the channel, you can click on the join button and that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.